But this is what surprised me the most. Even when we account for all of those changes, there's still a rise that we can't account for just from changing diagnosis. This remaining trend is smaller, but it's also real. Finding the causes behind this increase is where researchers are focusing, and there are many potential answers there. But it starts where we do, with our genes. Okay, Marin, I'm gonna tell you about this part because let's face it, I'm the genetics nerd between the two of us. Okay, I'm ready. All right, it starts in 1977. That's when we see the first published study that looks at this potential genetic component of autism. And it showed that autism tended to show up really strongly in identical twins. And a ton of research has been done since that confirms this, that if one twin is autistic, sometimes you see more than a 90% chance that the other twin is autistic. And when you look at fraternal twins who don't share identical DNA, right, but they're born at the same time, that rate drops to one in three. And normal siblings, it's like one in five. These are all way higher than the rate that you'd expect someone to sort of like randomly have autism, right?